Thank you for joining us today. I'm Dr. Gina Hurley, the Executive Director of Social Emotional Learning and Student Services for the Barnesville Public Schools. Today we're here to talk about educating the whole child. With me is Ms. Karen Cloutier. She is the principal of Barnesville West Barnesville and also Mrs. Amy Manfredi. She is the school counselor here at Barnesville West Barnesville. Thank you both for joining us. So I'd like to start with talking about, um, with you Karen, the positive behavioral supports and the school climate work that you've been doing here. And if you could speak to both the behavioral expectations that you've put in place with the staff as well as some of the assemblies to promote that positive climate, we'd love to hear about that. The staff has worked very hard, especially over the last year, um, introducing a behavioral matrix, which is um, sort of at the, at the base of our PBIS work. Uh, the behavioral matrix addresses behaviors or expected behaviors in every environment around the school. So it ranges anywhere from the cafeteria to classroom behavior, what we expect uh, of students in their specials, things like that. So wherever you go in the school, you'll see a copy of um, the matrix for that particular environment. So here in the library and in the computer lab, there is a matrix specific for this environment about what the expectations are. Things like eyes on the, on the teacher, um, full body body listening, hands to ourselves, treating materials with respect, uh, things like that are on the matrix. And why are those so important in the classroom well, environment? Well, it's, it's really important because we're, we're feeling that um, if we don't explicitly teach children what the expected behaviors are within any environment, they won't know. And um, it, it promotes a positive climate and positive relationships between students to students, students to adults, adults to adults, because obviously we, we function as models for these um, for our children here at school. And what we have done is expanded it into um, monthly assemblies, and we have these monthly assemblies where we bring everybody together in the school, and we may celebrate our concern and caring for each other. We may teach expected behaviors. We we may reward them for demonstrating expected behaviors. And students view those assemblies as a lot of fun, but it also teaches them about teamwork and getting along and, and um, collaboratively being in a place in the world together. Speaking of teaching, I know, Amy, you've been teaching the second step curriculum to our students for a few years since you, yes. since you began here uh, in grades kindergarten through third. Yep. Can you talk about what those lessons have been covering? The school counselor teaches a portion of second step and the health teacher teaches a portion of second step. So I teach half of the school for the first half of the year and then I teach the other half of the school for the second half of the year. We have four different uh, units that we work on. The first one is uh, skills for learning and skills for learning teaches things like focusing attention, using self-talk, um, things that will really help them in the classroom like when they're trying to be learners. Mm -hmm. Another unit that we do is empathy, so that's teaching them, you know, knowing and understanding how other people are feeling. And then we have our problem solving steps and it's just teaching them, we always say to them, you know, we really want you to be the best problem solver that you can be because you're not going to always have adults to help you. So mm -hmm. starting them at such a young age to kind of put it back on them and say, let's talk, sort of like collaborative problem solving, let's talk about how we can do this together and we can we can come up with a solution to your problem. So the, the problem solving steps has really been a nice, um, a nice unit to teach. And then our last one is emotional management, which is calming down and teaching them, you know, different steps on how to calm down when they're feeling frustrated or upset. The students love it and it's a very interactive program. Songs, there's dances, there's activities, there's games. Um, so it really keeps them engaged. It's not just me standing up there. And so the social emotional curriculum that Second Step provides uh, and it's taught through, through you and the health teachers, why do you think that's important? As a school counselor, what is the hope that students walk away with? Well, I mean, I think it's important because as you stated, we we're focusing on the whole child and students are at much more they are have much more needs mm -hmm. um, that aren't being addressed and that and that does not allow them to reach their learning because there's things that are in the way that mm -hmm. they haven't been able to learn that's why i feel like it's important is because i work with a lot of those students that have those social emotional needs 
and it's not necessarily just a category of kids that need them. There, it's it's universal. Across everybody needs everybody needs those skills. So speaking of needs, one of the things that we are starting this year is a universal screening yes. on the social emotional side. We've done universal screening on academics for a while, mm -hmm. um, and now we're using a tool. Um, the Devereaux and will be screening all students K to three and then identifying students who have certain needs so again what's your hope with getting those results how would you use those results and why do you think that's important to, to actually run this screener right so I'm really excited about this Dessa um, it really is helping to kind of streamline um, how we're identifying students that might be in need of services um, prior to this it was more like teacher thoughts, parents thoughts, but it was never anything that was really objective and, and wasn't just like somebody else was choosing it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it gives us data, number one. Um, and number two, it helps us to, you know, get pull the kids that we do need or that need that intervention um, and really just tracking them and following their progress and seeing how effective our services are for them. Great. The last thing I'd like us to talk about is a program that we recently brought in uh, and we had brought it in a few years ago and, and did some more training recently on Playworks and that's a program that really addresses student play and engagement on the playground. We had some of our health teachers and our teacher assistants trained. Can you talk a little bit about the program and what you've seen with that? Sure. Um, Playworks was introduced uh, to our staff, as you said, um, earlier this year. And it's a program that basically puts some structure to life on the playground and our recess. So what Playworks has done for us is it's provided some structure. It's still a lot of fun. Kids are still allowed to go out there and make choices about what they're going to be doing during recess, um, but there's more structure to it. So they may choose to play in the sand with the trucks, or they may choose to play on the structures, um, and they may choose to participate in a group game out in the field. But in addition to having these choices out there, we have specifically taught them how to play the game that are out there, how to use these structures, um, what, you know, what it looks like to stay safe on the playground and keep others safe. And we also have integrated our matrix um, into um, the playground and as far as what's expected behavior out there. Earlier in the year when we were first introduced to Playworks, uh, we had lessons on the playground. We had every grade level participate in a quick mini lesson before they went off to play about how they were going to use the structures and what games are all about. Um, so it's, it's been very positive so far and um, very calming. Um, there, I've, I've just sort of um, incidentally recognized the change in office referrals, things like that coming off the playground has, has definitely um, gone down in, compared to previous years. I think that's an important piece, mm -hmm. you, you, um, you talking about the office referrals, which is a, a data point that we look at, and Amy, you've talked about the data with mm -hmm. the, the screener, and I think those are tools that we'll be looking, or data points that we'll be looking at as we continue to work on educating the whole child and mm -hmm. providing these programs. So I just want to say thank you both for joining me thank today you. to talk about the work we're doing here in Barnstable, and thank you for joining us as well.